Disney is about to lose copyright in Mickey Mouse. That's right, Mickey Mouse. Literally the most iconic character that they've ever created. One that they themselves claim is worth $15 billion. And they're doing it all on purpose. But why? Well, the answer is both shocking and kind of genius. I'm Jake Watson, lawyer, producer, and YouTuber with Corridor Crew. Let's get into the issue. So what is a copyright? Why does Mickey Mouse have one that's almost 100 years old? How is he going to lose it? And why does that matter? A copyright is the right of an author of an artistic or scientific work to exploit that work without anybody else being able to do so. This is known as the exclusive right. But the big picture reason, the actual reason why copyright law exists isn't just to protect authors. The bigger reason is that it's to promote the progress of human knowledge. So copyright incentivizes people to go out, to try things, to learn things, to make things, to discover things, and in exchange, ensures them that at the end of the rainbow, they will be able to exploit the fruit of their labor without it being stolen from them. But the other side of copyright is that when a work is useful enough, when it is truly useful to the benefit of our culture, it becomes part of our popular culture. And in order for human knowledge to be expanded upon over time, you need to allow people who come along long after the original author to take that original work and expand upon it, to build upon it, so that overall, as a species, humanity is better off tomorrow than we are right now. Now, Mickey Mouse has a copyright because he is, in essence, a work of art and creativity, a contribution, if you will, to human knowledge. And, well, that contribution is owned by the Walt Disney Company. I own all this shit. In fact, Disney owns so many versions of Mickey Mouse, it's more like Mickey Mice. But the very first version, the OG version of Mickey Mouse that Disney first ever published was in 1928 with a little film called Steamboat Willie. And the copyright for that film lasts 95 years. More on how we got there in a minute. What it means right now is that on January 1st, 2024, Disney is going to lose their copyright in this very first version of Mickey Mouse. But what's more is that this will set off a timeline where over the coming years, several other versions of Mickey Mouse and several other iconic Disney characters will also lose their copyrights. So how are Mickey and his friends going to lose something that they've held for almost 100 years? All copyrights, every single one, is limited by time. And when the copyright protection on a work runs out, the work enters the public domain. Now, the public domain isn't like a repository for lost Disney characters or something. It's just this idea that when the time runs out, the exclusive right held by the copyright owner no longer applies. The thing is, once a work enters the public domain, it stays there forever. Now, as you might imagine, this is incredibly significant because it allows literally anybody to take the original work, to use it, and even to resell it without the permission of the copyright owner. Now, of course, Disney would be concerned with this. They don't want other people going out and selling their work without their permission. Do we have a problem? <laughs> no, sir. No, Mr. Mouse. But that's not what's shocking here. What's shocking is that the copyright in Steamboat Willie was supposed to expire 40 years ago. Now, as you probably well know, Walt Disney started creating some of the most iconic characters ever in the 1920s, 30s, and 40s. And all of these characters were protected for 56 years from the date of publication under the rules of the 1909 Act. So let's just do some rough math here. 1920s plus what, 56 years of protection leaves you roughly where? Late 1970s? Oh, that's weird. Look, there's a footnote here. The Copyright Act of 1976. Oddly convenient, Disney. You see, with their old friend Willie only being protected under the rules of the 1909 Act, his copyright was set to expire in 1984, which would also set off that timeline where numerous other characters that Disney owned would also expire and enter the public domain. So what was Disney to do? Well, let's see. You've got a multi-billion dollar character about to be pushed into the public domain. Oh yeah, that's right. They did exactly what you think they did, which was to embark on a very serious lobbying effort to get Congress to pass the Copyright Act of 1976. And I gotta say, the effort worked because the act extended copyright to characters created before 1978 for a total of 75 years, an additional 19 years above and beyond the original rules of the 1909 Act. See, Minnie? Money can buy happiness and laws. Ha ha. I don't want to completely undermine the 1976 Copyright Act by saying that it was entirely because of Disney. I mean, there were several other legitimate reasons why it was created and passed. And efforts for its development began in the early 1960s. 
It also codified the fair use doctrine, which is awesome, but also Disney. And look, well, it is nearly impossible to obtain comprehensive information on Disney's lobbying efforts from 1960 to 1975. Disney, even today, self-reports that they spend between four and five million dollars per year on federal lobbying alone, which doesn't sound like all that much. But when you consider that this is self-reporting, that they claimed in 1997 their mouse was worth eight billion dollars and they have numerous other connections with very influential lobbying groups like, oh, I don't know, the National Association of Public Broadcasters, the NCTA Internet and Television Association, and the Motion Picture Association of America. Look, I'm not blaming them. I'm just saying they like their mouse. That's why in 1998, Disney once again lobbied Congress, this time to pass the Copyright Term Extension Act. The Copyright Term Extension Act did exactly as the name implies, and that was to amend the 1976 Act to expand copyright protection by an additional 20 years for a total of 95 years. Once again, only for works created before 1978. Now, Disney's influence here cannot be overstated. For starters, one of the more derisive terms for the act was just to call it the Mickey Mouse Protection Act. That's probably because in addition to self-reporting $6.3 million in lobbying efforts for the act, Disney also made significant campaign contributions to key people involved in the development and passage of the act. By some reports, 18 of the 25 Congress people who originally sponsored the bill received $800,000 campaign contributions directly from Disney, including the Senate Majority Leader at the time. Of course, if you're going to spend that kind of money, I think it actually, there's a reversal there, and you're now required to go out and take them out to dinner first, which is exactly what then Disney CEO Michael Eisner did with Senate Majority Leader Trent Lott at the time to discuss, you know, I don't know, the development and passage of the act. Oh, I uh, don't think that's legal, Minnie. And it worked. This effort bought them a 20-year extension on all of their copyrights created before 1978, when on October 27th, 1998, Bill Clinton signed the bill into law. Now, it's at this point in Disney's journey that I just, I need to stop for a second, because what they did here is really dumb. They did not use today's sponsor, Squarespace. You see, Squarespace has been building and improving their platform for so many years now. They're so much more than just beautiful award-winning templates and 24-7 award-winning customer service. Of course, they still have those things, but Squarespace today, right here, right now, is an all-in-one platform for building your business and growing your audience online. As all the big studios know, it's all about the analytics now. Well, guess what? Squarespace is one step ahead of them all with best-in-the-game analytics. You can understand what your sales are, what your views are, where your audience is coming from, and make changes to improve your site so that you can better tailor your website to your audience over time. Now think about that, mouse. Hmm? That's right, I'm using mouse now because I don't want to mix the trademarks together and get anybody upset. But you all know who I'm talking about. And if that wasn't enough, Squarespace has the Squarespace Video Studio app, which allows you to edit videos seamlessly and share them with your audience. Now look, consider this. Do you have multiple social media accounts? Well, Squarespace can allow you to connect and manage them all from your Squarespace website. A way to get one message out to a bunch of different people on a bunch of different platforms. And I think some other people we've been talking about could benefit from this too. So here's my professional legal opinion on this whole thing. If you're interested in getting 10% of your first purchase of a website or domain, go to squarespace.com slash corridor crew, or just click the link in the description below. Now, <laughs> what I'm about to tell you next is a shocker. This brings us to today, where 95 years later, the very first version of Mickey Mouse is about to enter the public domain. So this naturally begs the question, why hasn't Disney done anything about it this time? I mean, can't they just lobby Congress again, get their copyrights extended, and everyone goes on as normal? Well, yeah, they could, and there are several reasons for why they aren't. Look, I thought about going into all of them, okay? You have the constitutionality of effectively perpetual copyright extensions. You have the social backlash that could possibly ensue if they embark on another large lobbying effort. You even have trademark, which I will talk about just a little bit, but they all pale in comparison to the real reason why they chose to do nothing about this. And the real reason is that because over the last 25 years, Disney has gotten so big that it is no longer worth the time 
to extend copyright in Mickey Mouse. It literally is not worth it to them anymore. That sounds simple. Oh yeah, they got big as a company, Disney, Mickey doesn't mean anything to them. No, look, I don't think you realize how big Disney has gotten. Since 1995, the period right before the Copyright Term Extension Act, Disney has made 22 major acquisitions which have dramatically shrunk the value of Mickey Mouse as a total portion of their entire business. Compare that to just four acquisitions made in their entire existence before 1995. But that's not what's truly staggering here. What's truly staggering is that the value of these acquisitions, when adjusted for inflation, that means everything I'm about to tell you is in today's real dollars. The value of the acquisitions before 1995 were worth $200 million. And the value of the acquisitions made after 1995 are worth $160 billion. That's an 800 times increase in acquisition value from before 1995 to after 1995. 800 times. For comparison, here's a little chart of Mickey Mouse worth his $15.4 billion in today's money next to some of the major acquisitions Disney has made since 1995. Are you ready? 1996, Disney buys ABC and ESPN for 19 billion. 06, Disney buys Pixar for seven and a half billion. 09, Disney buys Marvel for four billion. 2012, Disney buys Lucasfilm for four billion. 2019, Disney buys 21st Century Fox for a staggering 71.3 billion. And on November 6th of this year, Disney announced an $8.6 billion deal to acquire full control of Hulu. So now they own ABC, ESPN, Hulu, 21st Century Fox, Pixar, Marvel, and Lucasfilms, and they've all acquired them since 1995. Mickey who? I am really strong. No, you're not. Ow! Holy crap. Like, like I wrote this, this is the seventh time I've gone through this. It still blows my mind. Think about it this way. Even when Mickey Mouse does enter the public domain, say you could go out there and you make something really cool with Mickey Mouse, something well within your rights, something 100% in the manner that copyright was intended to promote the progress of science and the useful arts. Could you even put the dang piece somewhere that isn't directly owned or heavily controlled by Disney? Oh, but Jake, you could put it on YouTube. Yeah, that's a great idea. It gives me another idea. The idea that in 2014, Disney bought Maker Studios for a casual 500 million, and it owned 60,000 partnered channels at the time. Now, granted, that deal went sideways, and I think Phil DeFranco owns it now, but look, that's not the point. The point is that now, today, in this world, Disney is an absolute behemoth. And that's kind of what makes this terrifying, but also genius because it's like they've just spent the last 25 years silently and diligently working away in preparation for this exact moment, which is probably exactly what they did. I mean, they're literally choosing not to even attempt to extend copyright protection on the most iconic character they've ever created because, well, like he's, he's truly mouse-sized to them now. Like he's like a little baby boy mouse. Little Mickey boy, come here, get a little hug, Mickey. When I started researching this video, I really wanted to say that it was a win for the people to have Mickey Mouse enter the public domain because it shows that the law is still working in this country. But Disney is playing such a different game of chess that calling this a win simply because Disney chose not to do anything about it is like saying you won the race because you ran on a post. Let's be frank, Disney is about as threatened by Steamboat Willie entering the public domain as Shaquille O'Neal is threatened by Kevin heart. Oh, and one more tiny, small, itty, itty little bit of thing here. Uh, Disney's also not going to do anything about extending their copyrights because they still own trademarks in every character that they've ever produced. And the best thing about trademarks for them, at least in this situation, is that trademarks never expire. But don't worry, trademark is a vastly different area than copyright law, so it's not like Disney's gonna start going around and using their trademarks effectively as copyrights. It, it, it just means that they're gonna try. Now look, on a more serious note, in my opinion, it is a good thing that Mickey Mouse is entering the public domain, even if it's largely due to the fact that Disney just chose not to do anything about it. For 95 years, Disney has held the exclusive right in the character of Mickey Mouse. 
But Mickey Mouse is so much more than a character now. He's, he's a part of our popular culture, whether you like it or not, he's here to stay. And I'm sure that his success is well beyond Walt Disney's wildest dreams. And to be fair, it's because of the hard work that Disney has put into that character, which has made him so influential over all these years. But when we remind ourselves that the purpose of copyright is to promote the progress of sciences and useful arts so that those who come long after the authors may pick up that work and expand upon it and build upon it so that humanity is better off tomorrow than we are right now, I think it's time to start building. And honestly, I think the Walt Disney Company knows this too. And after researching this topic, here's my take on it. Disney just did what any other well-managed and well-positioned company would do in their circumstances. They changed how valuable Mickey Mouse was to them without changing their values. And honestly, you've got to commend them for that. If you liked this video and you want to see another one just like it, I did one on the legality of AI art right here. Otherwise, you can post a comment below and let me know what other topics you'd like me to get into on this Lawyer Explains series. Oh, and just one more thing. If you're interested in seeing Steamboat Willie for the first time in the public domain, just come to the Corridor YouTube channel at midnight on January 1st. See you later.